तो ओके विल डिस्कस नाउ बैंकिंग सेक्टर रिफॉर्म्स बैंकिंग सेक्टर रिफॉर्म्स तो गवर्नमेंट सेटअप नरसिंह हम कमेटी तो नरसिंह हम कमेटी तो यू मे राइट डाउन समथिंग अबाउट नरसिंह कमेटी तो यू मेंशन इन 1991 इन 1991 द गवर्नमेंट सेटअप इन इन्वर्टेड कॉमर्स द कमेटी ऑन फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम नेम ऑफ द कमेटी द कमेटी ऑन फाइनेंशियल सिस्टम under the chairmanship of the committee on financial system the committee on financial system under the chairmanship of mr m narsimham under the chairmanship of mr m narsimham m narsimham comma former governor of rbi mr m narsimham फॉर्मर गवर्नर ऑफ आरबीआई तो गवर्नमेंट सेटअप दिस कमेटी अच्छा दिस कमेटी गेव बिकॉज ही वॉज फॉर्मर गवर्नर वॉज फॉर्मर गवर्नर तो ओबियसली ही मस्ट हैव आइडिया अबाउट द बैंकिंग प्रॉब्लम एंड वॉट आर द इशूज तो दिस कमेटी एक्चुअली गेव रिपोर्ट विद इन थ्री मंथ विद इन इन नाइनटी वन इट सेल्फ एंड गवर्नमेंट एक्सेप्टेड मोस्ट ऑफ द रिकमेंडेशन एंड वॉट एवर बैंकिंग सेक्टर रिफॉर्म्स वर इनिशियटेड एट द टाइम इवन नाउ स्टिल they those are based on this committee's recommendation so reforms and the recommendations are by and large same because most of the recommendations were accepted so those re became reform so we will discuss few recommendations of the committee actually these are reforms itself in itself okay so first mention this k uh, the rbi should reduce CRR and SLR in a phased manner. Phased manner means gradually. So RBI should actually reduce CRR and SLR in a phased manner. So it said that that is CRR should be between three to five should be reduced to five uh, should be kept. Up to, uh, means within five percent, means three to five percent. So the minimum was three. So it said that it should be in the range of three to five, and SLR should be twenty-five percent only. It should not be. It should be the least level. Or yeah, इस तरह से बेटर है कि CRR should be how much? It, up to five percent. CRR it is better up to five, and the five percent or less. So CRR should be reduced to five uh, percent or less. Five percent or less, and SLR twenty-five. Was it accepted? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So RBI started reducing CRR SLR uh, from ninety-one itself. So uh, gradually RBI started reducing this, and in the by nineteen ninety-seven, uh, CRR SLR came in this range. So in nineteen ninety-seven, CRR SLR was this and this, and uh, since then you know RBI kept it uh, in these range within these range. Even now recently. Uh, CRR SLR is also even rather below this. Even CRR is four 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 percent now. So RBI actually by late nineties actually uh, RBI reduced it to this level and kept at these low levels. Acha, how RBI was unable to reduce? What was the reason which enabled RBI to reduce this? Which is the most important factor which enabled RBI? Hmm? LPG not as such LPG. Which was the main reason why RBI was able to reduce? very simple reason because as a part of economic reforms which was the main reason which was restraining rbi from reducing this inflation was because of which factor because of printing of money as a part of economic reforms government actually curtail and finally abolish printing of money deficit financing 
तो इन्फ्लेशन केम डाउन एंड वेन इन्फ्लेशन केम डाउन इट गिवन अपॉर्चुनिटी टू आरबीआई टू रिड्यूस दिस रिड्यूस इट्स व्हाट द पॉइंट बिकॉज़ गवर्नमेंट स्टॉप प्रिंटिंग ऑफ मनी अच्छा अनदर रीजन वाज प्रायोरिटी सेक्टर लेंडिंग पीएसएल तो नेक्स्ट पॉइंट द पीएसएल कोटा PSL, I told you already, priority sector lending quota should be reduced from 40% to 10%. 40% to 10%. Was it accepted? No. Still, it is 40%. Obviously, not accepted. So, first, obviously, was accepted. Second, not accepted. Okay, this is. It, do you think is it desirable to reduce uh, PSL quota? Yes or no? Hmm? No. no, if government would have reduced it to ten percent, you know, banks must be given just ten percent, not more than that. And is it crucial for achieving social objectives or not? Yes. Uh, banks are very important institution. Every other sector is rated with bank. Every economic activity needs credit. So uh, uh, this was not uh, justified as such. Even recently, one committee was set up, uh, Nachiket Moore committee. It said it should be increased to fifty percent, from forty to fifty. Although fifty may be too high, but forty, I think, at least should be there. Okay, so it was not uh, accepted. It is certainly not justified. Another, the RBI should grant licenses to new private sector, new private sector and foreign banks. New private sector and foreign banks to promote competition. To promote competition. So it said that the RBI should grant license to more and more banks in private sector as well as in foreign uh, foreign sector. What will be the uh, means uh, advantage of that? The competition would increase. And what is overall outcome of this competition? Efficiency will improve. So consumers will get more choice. So it will improve financial inclusion because right now we don't have. Still now we don't have sufficient bank branches. So when bank more banks will be there, more branches will be there. People would have access to banking facilities, and there should be competition among banks. So you will borrow from that bank, which will give you loan at least rate of interest. So you will open account, which will give you better facilities. So overall competition would improve efficiency actually, and consumers will get better services and at low prices. So was it accepted or not? Yes. So as I told you, K in which year RBI grant license to new banks? This in nineteen ninety nineteen ninety four, RBI grant license to which banks? I give you name of one bank. ICICI Bank. Any other bank? HDFC. HDFC Bank. UTI Bank. UTI Bank. UTI Bank is now. It is now. What is name? Axis Bank. Another is like City Bank, HSBC Bank, etc. So about eight banks were granted licenses at that time. Aja, one more thing is there. Ke, you know, in India, the we don't have on tap licensing policy. On tap ka matlab hai ke not on ready basis. Whenever RBI want to give license, RBI issue guidelines. Okay, now we now we are planning to give license. So only then anybody can apply. It doesn't mean that if anybody want to establish a bank cannot apply uh, uh, to RBI. RBI will not accept application. RBI would decide. Okay, now we have to give grant license. Then now you should in uh, RBI invites application. Only then you can apply. So in case of on tap licensing, anybody can apply any time. So we don't have on tap licensing. So RBI actually uh, issued guidelines. Okay, okay, we are going to give license. And then you should apply, and after out of these applications, are being granted license. Then between uh, between two thousand one to four, again RBI opened this policy, and RBI grant license to uh, some banks. Which banks were established in this duration? In early two thousand, like Yes Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, Yes Bank, Kotak Mahindra Bank, Standard Chartered, etc. Then in two thousand thirteen, 
although initially guidelines were issued in 2011 and finally license was given in 2013 so two banks were given licenses recently in 2013 which banks hmm? recently two banks were established mahila bank was separate with that though two private sector banks uh, bharti mahila bank also we can say bmb but that is government actually bank okay the main actually bank which is this is actually public sector bank government now we are talking about private bank one is bandhan bandhan bank another is idfc bank bandhan is a microfinance institution i told you it has established a bank and uh, idfc is a infrastructure development finance company so idfc bank so these two banks were established recently bandhan bank idfc bank and uh, after that in 2015 rbi granted license to differentiated banks not uh, like which are called payment banks and small finance bank we will discuss later so but those are not called technically banks those are called differentiated banks so uh, apart from that licenses to differentiated banks so we will discuss separately differentiated banks so we will discuss separately means these would be similar to banks will perform some of the functions not all functions of bank so this was can we say accepted the benefit will be competition and overall banking services will increase and consumers will benefit from this so this was obviously accepted i think it is clear so differentiated banks we will discuss separately okay now next is uh, next recommendation the rbi should adopt basel norms b a s e l basel norms for regulation of banks so what are basel norms any idea what are basel norms yes no uh, what are basel norms as such basel norms are in very simple words these are actually norms uh, means internationally recognized norms for regulation of banking se sector so in america europe uh, banks are regulated as per these norms so we'll discuss in detail later uh, although they focus on capital adequacy we'll discuss later so we'll this is somewhat long so we'll discuss in a separate section so obviously it was accepted and recently we have adopted the latest latest version of these norms what is that basel 3 so initially basel norm then revised to basel 2 and now we have started from 2013 onwards we have implemented basel 3 so we'll discuss what are these norms in very simple word these are internationally recognized norms international norms for regulation of banking system so now rbi is actually regulating banks uh, on the basis of almost same norms which are being applicable in other countries like mainly in america europe and other countries so so that actually super regulation supervision should become strong and rbi should be able to effectively regulate banks so this was accepted so this is long so we will discuss in a separate section after these recommendations next recommendation uh, public sector banks psbs should be granted more autonomy psbs should be granted more autonomy public sector bank should be granted more autonomy so was it accepted yes or no yes now government is not usually intervening in their functioning though they have given almost complete autonomy another recommendation bank should use information and communication technology ICT and automation, and automate their. Bank should use ICT and automate their operations.
to automate like which is the most important step in automation is atms or what is full form of atm automatic teller machine instead of going to counters now you this apart from that what is most important uh, solution which banks are using which is the most important it solution which banks are using hmm? no, internet banking is enabled by which 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 what is the name of the main core solution hmm? the core solution actually the core of the use of it is actually core banking core banking solution cbs core banking solution called cbs to so cbs actually is implemented by banks to so core banking solution acha what is uh, full form of core okay cbs is core banking solution so in simple word is a computerization but it is not exactly computerization to so core stand for centralized centralized online real time environment environment slash exchange both are used sometime environment or exchange to so centralized online real time environment or exchange to so cbs means full form of core core is centralized online and real time environment or exchange cori so what is significance of core banking solution can we say it is computerization of bank so computerization of bank and core banking solution is same like if instead of maintaining manual record now records are maintained uh, in computer can we say it is same as core banking solution core yes or no what what is the difference it should be clear ha uh, yes the main thing it is not just computerization computerization means that you uh, bank is uh, uh, maintaining record in computers no it is actually interconnection of all computers interconnections for example whatever your bank balance earlier you know the, uh, the importance of bank branch your your home branch has increased now or decreased has decreased earlier if you will deposit money in your branch then can you withdraw money from other branch no because there was no uh, means centralized records were not there so your bank your branch no okay what is your bank account balance other branch may not be doing that so other branch you cannot withdraw money from other branch when you send the check then check will go to your the home branch only then it will check your balance and then it will clear then it will be cleared so but now you can deposit in any branch and withdraw in any branch any time so it is actually centralized means centralization means connection and online means through online this and, that, and real time environment real time means when you deposit money immediately your account is credited and when and uh, and you can withdraw money now is it possible you may deposit 1 lakh rupee you in your account and now 1 lakh rupee is there can you withdraw from 10 branches 1 lakh is 1 lakh is there but <laughs> the moment you withdraw from any branch you are called without it then you can't go to this you can so or you can't go back to the same branch you know i have just deposited money <laughs> so it is actually real time environment is created so this is actually uh, means more uh, beyond rather computerization like real time environment is created and centralized record is maintained so this is called core banking solution and because of this you know now uh, the importance of branch actually your home branch has reduce actually it hardly matters where you are having branch because in any branch you can deposit money withdraw money almost all facilities are provided by any branch okay so computerization was done core banking is adopted i think clear so obviously it was adopted another point even it was other this year's prelims core banking what is this core banking acha another is uh, uh, banking ombudsman banking ombudsman uh, should be established for expeditious expeditious means quick 
resolution of for expeditious resolution of grievances of bank customers expeditious resolution of grievances of bank customers expeditious resolution of grievances of bank customers now what is a banking ombudsman any idea in simple words tribunal is slightly different it's almost in very simple word layman's language banking ombudsman hmm no no auditing is entirely different in in simple word it is a type of consumer court a consumer court so like just like you buy a product and if that product is defective and firm is not responding so you can go to a uh, consumer court because if you go to normal court it will be long drawn process so consumer court will give immediate decision similarly if you are a customer of bank and there is some grievance bank is not able to resolve that grievance then you can go to if you go to normal courts it will be a long drawn process so you should go to this special court ombudsman consumer is the type of consumer court and consumer court means for which consumers for bank customer consumers so if you have a grievance against any particular actually you know you from with your bank and bank cannot resolve your grievance or problem then you should go to you can go to this so that it can give immediate decision because it will be handling only cases related to that banking so it will be more specialized it can understand a better manner so it will be uh, some judicial members will be there some bank ex banking expert should be there to understand the genuineness of your grievances and how it should be resolved so it's a it is a quasi judicial body i think what the point just a kind of consumer court for bank customer so do you think is it desirable or not yes so it means that uh, after this court now banks actually would be more uh, uh, means more sensitive towards their uh, consumer grievances because if they would do this thing then consumer can go there and bank will be penalized for that okay and uh, uh, so this was accepted or not yes so uh, banking ombudsman were established now every bank branch comes under a particular ombudsman so right now area wise ombudsman have been established so every bank branch comes under a particular ombudsman so if you have any grievance against uh, uh, regarding that operations of that branch you should go to that particular ombudsman so so that means customer should have option would it improve consumer services or not customer services will improve yes okay next uh, debt recovery tribunals debt recovery tribunals drts debt recovery tribunals drts drt <laughs> debt recovery tribunals uh, should be established to enable banks to quickly recover to enable banks to quickly recover their dues from defaulters to quickly recover their dues from defaulters to quickly recover their dues from defaulters so debt recovery tribunals should be established to enable banks to recover their dues from defaulters so this is a debt recovery tribunal it is also a tribunal means also a judicial judicial authority what is difference between this ombudsman and drt what are debt recovery tribunal drt any any is who will go to drt bank against against a customer borrower defaulting borrower and who would go to ombudsman customer bank customer against bank got the point so what is the objective here the people who default so earlier you know banks were going to normal courts and that was a very long drawn process because when court will give order then bank will take any action like selling property or recovering its money so bank's money was held up actually to so, uh, separate court actually should be there so was it accepted yes so government has established drts so initially these were set up in four metropolitan cities now drts are there in all major cities so in major cities drts have been established so that bank can quickly recover npa or dues so what will be benefit of drt it will enable uh, means it will help in reducing npas of banks so that quickly it can they can give decision 
and bank can actually recover those dues. Okay, so DR. <laughs> it doesn't mean that if if a tribunal court is there, then corruption would end. Why there is still a lot of means you can say illegal thing activities. The courts are there. So means hmm? yes. Yeah, huh, we'll discuss. Don't worry, we'll discuss everything. So, um, the, the, if court is there, it doesn't mean that crime would eliminate. If police is there, doesn't crime will, will eliminate? So certainly, it will help in reducing that. But can these things cannot eliminate? Aja, another is asset <coughs> reconstruction company, ARC, asset reconstruction company slash fund. Sometimes may be called asset reconstruction fund. Asset reconstruction company slash fund, but usually called ARC, should be established. Asset reconstruction company slash fund, in bracket ARC, should be established to purchase NPAs of banks at discount. To purchase NPAs of banks at discount. To purchase NPAs of banks at discount. So, asset because ARC should uh, should be established to actually purchase bank uh, NPAs of banks uh, at discount. So, what is function? Uh, what is function of ARC? NP it will buy NP of bank. Let's suppose any bank. Let's suppose SBI. Out some out of some loan, some loan will become NP. Some default will be there. Let's suppose uh, well, 10 crore loans actually become NP. I'll just give you an example. K NP SBI actually whatever loans it has given out of that maybe 10 crore has become NP. Okay, so SBI has two options. One option obviously is that it should recover from these people. Should actually send notice, go to AR, uh, where DRT and will uh, recover money. Will negotiate with them. One option. Second option is that instead of dealing with these defaulters, it may sell this these loans to ARC and ARC will make payment to this Achab, ARC will pay how much 10 crore or more or less yes. less so they will negotiate let's suppose ARC is able to uh, is offering 8 crore only so let's suppose it may think as they may think even if we want to recover on our own could it have recovered entire money no it may think hardly we can recover 8 crore or maybe less so it is better to take 8 crore and sell it Achab, the, then ARC will purchase it at discount so ARC actually will purchase uh, NPAs of banks at discount and this will be on the basis of negotiation ke how much money and then what ARC will do ARC will recover money from these defaulters. Achha, it would be a specialized company to deal in recovery. So how it would recover? So would it send bouncers to these people? <laughs> <laughs> Just give this money otherwise. <laughs> they will sell property. Actually, in very simple word, the ARC will recover only through actual legal means. It cannot send bouncers, first of all. It would actually uh, send notice as per uh, and will go to DRT. Achha, bank can go to DRT and ARC can also, obviously. So ARC actually, there is uh, some legal provisions. We will discuss Surface Act is there, which also empowers actually creditors to recover dues. So through various legal procedures, provisions, it will send notice to them. And would go to sue them or would negotiate them. So this would be a specialized body, or certainly it will because sending bouncers is illegal. So obviously it will through legal means actually it will actually recover. Mainly they, it will consist of many legal experts and banking experts who are specialized in recovery and will deal with defaulters and recover money. So if it can recover more than it crore, it will be its profit. Otherwise it will be loss. So ARCs. So was it, what is benefit of uh, uh, utility of ARCs? Reduce NPA. And uh, why? Because the what will be benefit to bank? Yes, bank actually the main focus of that bank will focus on its core business rather than dealing with defaulters. So it is not the core business of bank to deal with defaulters and send notice, etc. So this is one part of this business, but it's not the core business. So bank can focus on its core activities rather than dealing with defaulters. So there should be a specialized institution to deal with defaulters. So this ARC established or not? Yes. 
तो देन एक्चुअली गवर्नमेंट स्टैब्लिश एसेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनी इन ब्रैकेट इंडिया लिमिटेड तो एसेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनी इंडिया लिमिटेड ए आर सी आई एल वॉज स्टैब्लिश ऑल दो इट वॉज स्टैब्लिश मच लेटर इन टू थाउजेंड टू ए आर सी आई एल वॉज स्टैब्लिश तो इट वॉज इट इज एक्चुअली गवर्नमेंट कंपनी एसेट रिकंस्ट्रक्शन कंपनी इंडिया लिमिटेड so right now we have this only or some other companies are also there yes we have about i think 12 15 companies arcs in india so this is government company and lot of other companies are there in private sector so earlier these were not there in private sector now just like i told you even dfi were used to be in public sector only now such kind of activities are provided by merchant banks now almost same so now a lot of actually i think about 12 to 15 arcs are operating in india now so this is government and others are actually in private sector some foreign also so recently government has allowed 100% fdi in arcs and even without actually permission that is through automatic route so why the objective is that you know npas have increased so right now the size of arc is less so that if more and more arcs will be there then bank would have more option to sell their npas so because size of arc is still small so that is why government has adopted a liberal policy even 100% fdi is allowed if foreigners can establish their own arc even without actually seeking prior prior permission and they can actually uh, so that bank should have option to sell to them to so, clear what is arc okay next uh, next recommendation uh the rbi should deregulate interest rates the rbi should deregulate interest rates what does mean deregulate interest rates that rbi should not fix interest rate rather who should fix banks actually on the basis of demand and supply allow R, means bank should be rbi should be intervening least so what are we did in this direction to so write down first point okay uh, i told you already uh, one point ke acha first thing no no that uh, first point is that ke rather uh, write down rbi deregulated rbi deregulated interest rates on loans on all loans of rupees Two lakh or more. RBI deregulated interest rates on all loans of rupees two lakh or more. So this, as a general policy, if the amount of loan is two lakh or more, RBI will not intervene. Acha, what does mean? That if the amount of loan is less than two lakh, then RBI will intervene or may intervene. May. It means that if the amount of loan is more than two lakh, then RBI won't intervene. It's up to bank only, solely. So there may be exceptions, but in general, RBI won't intervene. And uh, uh, if the amount of loan is too large, then RBI may intervene. Any logic for this? If amount of two lakh or more, RBI will not intervene. Any logic? Then bank is free to charge. Very simple. Yes, actually, uh, the amount of loan is more than two lakh. Then person may not be much vulnerable or much from weaker section. So the only in case of weaker sections, RBI may intervene. Otherwise, no. So one thing. Second point within this, as I told you already, is that K R B on which account R B used to fix in R B banks used to fix uh, R B used to fix. Now it is given to banks. On which account I told you earlier R B used to fix interest rate. Now banks fix interest rate. On which account? How many type of account you can open in bank? So which account? Saving account. R B used to fix interest rate. So mention that. in 2011 rbi deregulated interest rates on saving account deposits on saving account deposits as well as on deposits of on deposits of non resident 
एक्सटर्नल रूपी अकाउंट नॉन रेसिडेंट एक्सटर्नल रूपी अकाउंट इन ब्रैकेट एन आर इन ब्रैकेट ई आर ए एन आर ई आर ए नॉन रेसिडेंट एक्सटर्नल रूपी अकाउंट अच्छा एन आर आई इन इंडिया कैन ओपन टू टाइप्स ऑफ अकाउंट इन इंडिया वन इज एन आर ई आर ए विच शॉर्ट आई है ऑलरेडी नॉन रेसिडेंट एक्सटर्नल रूपी अकाउंट एन आर ई आर ए तो इन ब्रैकेट जो स्टूडेंट एन विच इज वन मोर अकाउंट एन आर आई कैन ओपन सेकेंड टाइप ऑफ अकाउंट इज एफ सी एन आर इन ब्रैकेट बी एफ सी एन आर बी तो एन आर आई को कैन ओपन टू टाइप्स ऑफ अकाउंट एन आर ई आर ए एंड एफ सी एन आर बी So I'm just deviating from here to explain this. Acha <coughs> NRI are full form. I have already given you FCNRB. You may write down full form. FCNRB means foreign currency, non-resident foreign currency, non-resident bank account, foreign currency, non-resident bank account. Okay. So in India. NRI can open two types of account. One is NRI, whose full form I have already given you, non-resident external rupee account, and this is foreign currency non-resident bank account. Acha, so what is difference in these two accounts? Here the account balance should be maintained in rupee, and here it is in some hard currencies like do, do, dollar, euro, uh, uh, means European Union, uh, sorry, uh, uh, euro of Europe, European Union, and this pound sterling, etc. So in selected currencies, these account, this account is maintained. Acha, this acha. What is the difference? Let's suppose if NRI will deposit hundred dollar in this account, so what will be account balance? Hmm? Right now, actually, it is sixty seven. Let's suppose so sixty seven hundred rupees. So if hundred dollars will be deposited, let's suppose NRI is depositing dollar a hundred. So account balance here, what will be? Rupees. 6700 और यहां पे अकाउंट बैलेंस क्या होगा डॉलर हंड्रेड अच्छा इंटरेस्ट विल बी पेड इन टर्म्स ऑफ रुपी ओनली एंड हियर इट विल बी इन डॉलर व्हाट द पॉइंट अच्छा व्हेन एनआरआई वुड विथड्रॉ मनी हियर तो हियर इट विल विथड्रॉ हम आई एम कमिंग टू दैट तो इफ एनआरआई विल विथड्रॉ मनी दिस व्हाटएवर डॉलर आउट ऑफ दिस मे विथड्रॉ 10 20 डॉलर ओके हियर व्हेन एनआरआई विल दिस विथड्रॉ दिस रुपी Then how many dollars a foreigner will get? And I will get dollar or rupee when he would withdraw outside country. Will get dollar only, hard currency only. Then if let's suppose he want to withdraw entire money, then this money will be converted rupee will be converted to dollar. So how many dollar could be bought at that time? It means that if rupee would depreciate, then let's suppose so he will get more than hundred dollars or less than hundred dollars. If rupee will depreciate, means he has to pay maybe uh, now sixty seven. He has to pay maybe eighty rupee to buy one dollar. Then, then less than hundred. And if rupee will appreciate, then he will get more dollars in this. So in this case, in the, in which one actually both are they will uh, deposit money in hard currency only and withdraw only hard currency. Okay, here that in hard currency balance will be same and will be drawn in the same currency. Here that hard currency will be converted to rupee. And when he, that NRI will withdraw, then on the date of withdrawal, whatever will be exchanged accordingly, this rupee will be converted to dollar and can be withdrawn. What the point? So, what is difference in this main difference between this NRI opening this account or this account? From this point of view, which is the what is the main difference here? Hmm? Hmm? Exchange rate risk is on on whom? In which account exchange risk has to be borne by NRI? Here uh, and here, is there any exchange rate? Risk? No, it is deposited in hard currency. We don't in hard currency. It will not affect exchange rate of rupee with the V any hard currency. So here NRI actually has to bear uh, this exchange rate. Okay, which is supposed to be better out of these two accounts? This or this? First second. Why? Hmm. To whom? Less risk to depositor, but for country, which is better? It is better that we should be at risk, or for, the NRI should be at risk. The better other person should be be at risk. So which is better? Hmm? 
which is expected to be more stable first one because this money could be withdrawn and spent in india also this money cannot be withdrawn so this money could be spent in india if nri may have this intention ki i may need this money in india and nri taking risk here exchange rate risk here so this is expected to be uh, more probable not to be withdrawn the probability of not being withdrawn is in which account here so that is why nri can open all types of account here saving current recurring deposit fd all but here only fd is allowed only fd and all types of account are allowed why because this is less stable what the word and this is more stable chances are that k nri may spend in india so this money may spend in india mean will not be withdrawn so this is actually supposed to be slightly better that is why all types of accounts could be opened here only fd and here uh, here all accounts all accounts come in the saving account current fd rd all types of accounts and both are fully convertible or repatriable both are fully convertible means they this rupee could be converted into dollar and can be withdrawn no restriction on uh, repatriation or conversion here convert conversion won't be required directly it could be repatriated so both nri can withdraw money anytime from any of this account and obviously nri will get hard currency here the same hard currency here it would be converted to hard currency when at the time of withdraw which point it is more stable in the sense ki this money when nri kept in rupee this money if it is withdrawn and spent here then it would not go back it is not like that ki you deposit money in rupee here it won't you cannot deposit money from here in rupee so money deposition will be there only in hard currency so it means that if it is withdrawn it means that that money would not go out what the and here nri is taking exchange risk rate risk also so this is more so that is why all types of accounts are allowed and here only fixed deposit is allowed got the point and uh, uh, acha who fixes interest rates on this account rbi banks banks what this what i have dictated here in 2011 rbi deregulated interest rates on this account, deposits of this account so banks fix interest here and who fix pay interest on this who fix interest is still rbi here rbi fixes interest okay so interest is fixed by interest is fixed by banks here and here actually rbi so rbi deregulated interest on which account this account not on this account so here rbi used to fix interest and rbi fixes interest in reference to a uh, international rate of interest or international benchmark interest what is that mm, that is libor so in relation to libor we will discuss what is libor so in relation to an interest which is actually uh, means charge in other countries means which is a reference rate of interest for fixing interest so we will discuss later the in relation to libor libor plus something so rbi used to fix interest here banks are free so different bank may be offering different interest here okay so i have deviated uh, a bit here now what was the point uh, uh, in this what i have dictated in 2011 rbi deregulated interest rates on saving account deposit now your saving account deposit you know earlier bank uh, rbi used to fix now bank used to fix and second on this account also rbi deregulated now banks can uh, decide how much interest if they want to give to the indian people on saving account and to nri on this account okay Okay, but here right now RBI has fixed just minimum four percent. We have discussed already that. Okay, so uh, RBI should deregulate interest rates. So we have discussed one point: that if the amount of loan is two lakh or more, then banks can fix. Second point in this, I told you that uh, on this account, saving account on NRIRA, bank can fix interest. And third point in this, in der deregulation of interest. Uh, RBI permitted banks. RBI permitted banks to determine their own benchmark, own benchmark prime lending, benchmark prime lending rates, rates BPLR. dplr 
or may be called plr only means benchmark may or may not be written to so bplr or plr so earlier rbi used to fix plr of banks then rbi said now bank you can fix your own plr whatever you want you can fix plr acha to these are some important recommendations of uh, this nursing home committee which were actually most of these were accepted interested were also deregulated okay plr we'll discuss in a separate section just after this so what the point here so these recommendations which were i mean uh, these are all accepted these are reforms whatever measures were taken by rbi these are all still relevant everything is still relevant now okay what is plr or benchmark this is actually technically a benchmark so benchmark interest actually was plr so you may write down benchmark interest to so plr so what is prime lending rate so mention that any idea first of all what is this plr yes to so mention this thing it is the rate of interest at which a bank lends rate of interest at which a bank lends to its most credit worthy lends to its most credit worthy in bracket prime most credit worthy in bracket prime borrowers to so rate of interest at which a bank lends to its most credit worthy borrower means the prime borrowers so that is called prime lending rate any example like if uh, like for example like tata is most credit worthy company so if tata will borrow from any bank so whatever interest bank is expected to charge from that that is plr prime lending rate acha this interest should be high or low low so mention this it is the least it is the least in bracket floor f l w r the so floor it is the least uh, in right floor rate of interest least or floor rate of interest at which uh, a bank lends a bank lends on commercial basis so it is a uh, floor rate of interest why so it is the least interest which is charged by bank on commercial basis uh, so bank can bank has to charge low interest if it is directed by rbi but otherwise on commercial basis bank will never charge below uh, this interest because this is the most credit worthy means so if uh, borrower is most credit worthy risk is will be less the bank will be charging low uh, interest so it's the least rate of interest and it actually earlier it served as a benchmark rate of interest so mention that it served as benchmark Slash the difference rate of interest. Simple. It served as benchmark slash reference rate of interest. That is. What is the meaning of benchmark? Benchmark. What is the meaning of benchmark here? Reference. Yes. Any other? the bank charges interest from other customers in relation to this interest so mention that okay uh, that is it served as reference rate of interest for charging interest from other customers for example if you take a loan there are two types of loan fixed interest loan and uh, floating interest loan or floating loan so in case of fixed interest interest would remain fixed but in case of floating interest loan so your interest rate would keep on varying and that interest will will be linked with this benchmark so if let's suppose you take a home loan and uh, two people have taken a home loan uh, loan a and b a has taken fixed loan so the interest will remain fixed me emi of a will remain always fixed 
and uh, but in case of b has taken a floating loan so when plr of bank will reduce usually when rba reduces repo rate so then plr usually reduces so if bank will reduce plr it means that the interest will reduce and then emi of that person who is taking floating loan will reduce but if uh, in the reverse case if uh, let's suppose the plr is increased by bank then interest will go up and emi will increase acha emi means equated monthly installment does it include principal or interest or both both so emi means simply i'm giving you a brief idea what is emi equated monthly installment you take a loan of let us suppose 1 lakh rupee okay 1 lakh rupee you have taken loan now 1 lakh rupee let's suppose interest is 10% for one year so 1 lakh plus interest is how much for one year 10% interest 10% pe kitna how much money you have to pay back overall um let's suppose 20% maan lete 20% pe liya simple ho jayega 20000 interest you have to pay overall so how much money you have to pay uh, 1 lakh 20000 okay now whatever money you have to pay entire money you have to pay back in 2 years sorry one year so how much money we divided by month so if the amount of 10 year of loan is one year then divided by 12 it will be how much 10000 it will be your emi equated monthly installment it is what principal plus interest divided by number of months what is emi what the meaning of what is emi this is principal and this is interest so total principal total interest on loan and divided by number of 10 year of this will got equated monthly installment acha if interest will reduce then emi will reduce or not so this is equated monthly installment so in case of fixed um, uh, in case of floating interest so emi would be affected by change in plr clear okay. acha just a basic word i have just explained okay i have deviated so here from here now now we come back to plr so it served as benchmark rate of interest and uh, acha banks were free to fix their plr acha and benchmark in the sense even rbi when rbi said you cannot charge more normally you know banks uh, are if rbi under psl let's suppose bank has to lend to weaker sections agriculture pharma etc ssi so do you think banks will be willing to charge high or low from small scale industry for example hi but is it desirable no so rbi put ceiling ki how much you can charge from ssi how much you can charge from farmers etc so i'll give you one illustration ki uh, or you may write down this illustration example a uh, ceiling on interest for ssi at least this ceiling is fixed by rbi obviously to so rbi fix ceiling and that ceiling was 4% uh, this uh, that ceiling was uh, this uh, plr plus 4% to so rbi said ke if let's suppose your plr may be let's suppose plr of that bank may be let us suppose 9% so to how much it can charge from acha it is 9% means if you are giving loan to tata at 9% let's suppose then from a small scale industry you can charge how much 13 not more than this so in that sense actually it is serving as a benchmark so uh, rbi used to fix uh, ceiling of interest in relation to plr not in absolute term so rbi will not fix 13% so acha is it justified or not if you are giving loan to tata at this 9% so at least you should charge in relation to that not okay you can add 4% but not much more because otherwise bank may be charging much higher interest from ssi so this was the issue now what issue was there in this so i just give you example ke how it was serving as a benchmark rate now you are a let's suppose chairman of bank and you have to decide interest so you would you would be willing to charge high or low interest on ssi high. Now, is there any way you can charge a uh, high interest is there any way you can charge high interest from uh, small scale industry plr is fixed by bank you have discretion to fix so what bank did bank started increasing the plr they increased the plr maybe to 12% then 12 plus 4 they were charging 16% so in order to charge high interest from weaker sections from small scale industries from farmers actually banks started increasing the plr so that they can charge high interest 
got the point but there would be some problem if they will increase plr yes the thing is that ke now tata do you think would borrow from this bank then no so can do you think the bank will lose prime customers or not yes can bank afford to lose prime customers no so what bank did so bank actually uh, uh, what they did they increase plr and they actually said to tata ki you are not prime customer no longer you are not best customer now you are best of the best <laughs> so we will give you loan below plr still you will get it because you are not it is for best so you are best of the best so we will give you still at night to retain good customer and uh, so what does mean can we say is it genuine thing is a kind of manipulation or not officially they increase because if they are still lending to tata at 9% then plr is nine obviously but officially they increase it so that they can charge high interest from weaker sections ssi etc so the banks started actually manipulating it i think what the point ki they increase plr officially and but they still were lending to best customers below plr because they were saying you are best of the best so obviously so this is a kind of manipulation because effectively plr should be what they are actually giving charging from the best customer so then rbi make change what rbi then change the name of this so benchmark rbi said ki will uh, now will not be plr but will be in 2000 base rate in 2010 then actually this plr was replaced by base rate so plr was replaced by base rate in 2010 Okay, so PLR was replaced by base rate in 2010. Okay, what is base rate? You may write down something about base rate. Base rate, same definition. So you can say rate of interest at which it is the rate of interest. At which a bank lends. to its prime customer to its prime to its prime customers to its prime customer matlab jo the same uh, exactly same definition okay apart from that uh, can we say it is a uh, floor rate of interest yes so mention that it is floor and and benchmark rate of interest because now benchmark will be base rate it is floor and benchmark rate of interest mm -hmm. what is the difference just one difference what is the difference then just one thing rbi said ke whatever actually is your base rate now you cannot give loan to anybody below that rate so the only difference is that ki banks cannot charge interest which is less than base rate okay to mention this thing ki banks banks were prohibited to lend at to lend at the interest rate which is less than the base rate okay so banks were prohibited from charging interest of less than base rate so uh, this is the, the only difference is this thing. otherwise exactly same so earlier plr then base base rate acha how banks fix fix base rate let's suppose you are chairman of a bank you have to decide interest so acha and this is the rate of interest you are giving uh, at which you are lending to best customer so how much interest you can fix is it possible can you fix 5% interest practically feasible or not why not can you tell me reason acha five ni maybe 7% is possible or not can a bank can fix 7% because you are giving loan to those which are risk is almost zero so can a bank can fix at 7% possible or not on practical grounds right? yes or no 7% is possible or not yes 7% pe possible hai 
how it is possible can you tell me acha why it is not possible yes so for, for the most important thing is that ki you know you are when you are saying ki 7% is feasible you are assuming ki do you think the money which bank is lending to uh, maybe any company maybe tata do you think from where bank got that money deposits so do you think people bank has to pass on some interest to depositors or not so you are considering ki bank has got this money for free bank has to pay interest to depositors bank has to for collecting money from public it has to open branches staff etc does it recover uh, its cost or not apart from that if bank is giving loan to tata is it actually would not it uh, charge uh, add its profit margin or is it serving a social purpose for giving loan to tata you no know? so it should have profit margin so it should uh, so how bank should fix base rate on the basis of its cost of raising funds so mention this thing also banks have to fix their base rates on the basis of their cost of raising funds from the public on the basis of their cost of raising funds on the basis of their cost of raising funds cost of raising funds which include cost of raising funds which include uh, what are the cost which include interest paid to depositors interest paid to depositors comma operational expenditure like staff salaries operational expenditure like staff salaries Uh, comma rent etc is rent of building rent etc and their own profit margin etc and their own profit margin and their own profit margin to so bank actually uh, banks were rbi actually give guideline ki in what manner bank have to uh, estimate cost and accordingly bank used to estimate their cost of raising fund from public and uh whatever from where because not only public bank may borrow from rbi also or from others so whatever is the average cost of overall cost of raising funds from public and accordingly bank used to fix base rate and whatever base rate is fixed bank cannot give loan to anybody below that rate so otherwise uh, earlier plr then base rate actually so what the idea why rbi replaced uh, this actually plr with base rate okay but there was some problem in 2015 especially there was some problem with this what was the issue then rbi even replaced it so it is replaced by nclr so why what was the problem the problem was that again to so earlier problem we have discussed that this happened and bank started manipulating another recent problem was that ki in 2015 acha in the last few years you know industrial growth came down overall gdp growth came down because of mainly which sector in the last from in 2013 14 15 in the overall gdp growth came down because of mainly poor performance of which sector not agriculture A growth of agriculture sector is always low so mainly because of industry mainly manufacturing and what were the reasons why industrial growth came down two reasons i told you major two reasons what are the two important reasons no no i have already told you try to revise industrial growth came down because of two main reasons two broad reasons no one is high interest rates it lead to even tussle between rbi and government and other is actually some policy paralysis we can say or business environment like government uh, failed to initiate reforms and lot of projects were stalled so business environment actually is very important i told you in case of investment two things are important interest and this uh, business environment overall so there were problems in business environment like due to a lack of clear, uh, means problems in land acquisition clearances overall we can say policy policies or problems in ease of doing business another is interest rates and you know the, even this lead to why there was tussle between rbi and government at that time the reason was that government wanted what from rbi governor he should reduce interest rate why what will be the benefit government thought if rbi will reduce interest rate then industrial growth investment would pick up 
it would increase growth and in, uh, employment in the country. <coughs> What's the point? But why RBI was not willing to reduce interest rates? Because inflation was very high earlier. Uh, but you know, inflation, as I told you, if RBI might have reduced interest rate, inflation might have increased, but growth might have increased. So in short run, at least, the government would have benefited somewhat. So as we have discussed, the short term uh, trade off is there between inflation and growth. This was the reason which led to Tassil. Got the broad idea? Now you know ke, uh, how actually when RBI will when government was demanding that RBI should reduce interest rate, how reduction of interest rate by RBI repo rate mainly by RBI, how it will promote industrial growth? Can you tell me this? Because if RBI will reduce repo rate, then how industrial growth will pick up? Hmm? No. If RB will reduce repo rate, how industrial growth will pick up? Bank will pass on that. How bank will pass on? By reducing what? By reducing which rate? Base rate. What the point? So they should reduce base rate. And when they will reduce base rate, so uh, in cost of borrowing for industry will come down and industrial growth investment would pick up. What the point? So, uh, and it is. Uh, It is called monetary policy transmission. Also, okay? impact of monetary yeah. policy on real variables. Acha, in 2015, RBI actually mm -hmm. reduced uh, uh, repo rate four times. So RBI reduced mm -hmm. repo rate mm -hmm. four times, and we can say by 125 basis points. But the 125 basis okay. points. Now RBI reduced interest rates. So how it would help in benefiting uh, industry? Mm -hmm. Because bank would charge less interest, and bank will charge less interest when bank will reduce base rate. And what happened? Banks reduce base rate by fifty to sixty BPS. So banks reduce uh, base rate only by fifty to sixty basis points. So in last year's economic survey, there was a table on this. So there was discussion over this issue. Okay, it means that the benefit of reduction in repo was passed on to industry. Yes or no? Hmm? Not fully passed. It means that actually a reduction in repo rate actually was not fully passed on to industry. What the point? And even because this thing actually RBI governor severely criticized this thing also. Okay, uh, why you are not passing on? So RBI governor several times suggested bank you should reduce your repo rate base rate because we have we are reducing it for this purpose only so the industrial growth should pick up so can we say whatever benefit we were expecting expecting to get from this that happened or not that didn't happen I think what the point and even RBI governor was so frustrated once actually uh, uh, media people ask can we expect some reduction in further reduction in repo rate so. Uh, uh, at that time, Dr. Raghuram Rajan he said that there is no sense and there is no use in reducing repo rate. Banks are not passing on. So uh, means actually the thing is that what is the logic? I mean, what is the use? Because we have already reduced repo rate and bank have not yet passed on. So we will wait. Let the bank pass on to this benefit. Only then we'll think of reducing repo rate further. So it means that actually RBI was rather very frustrated. Why you are not actually doing this thing? So whatever is our actually objective that is not materialized. So because of this thing, the bank have not reduced. So uh, the, whatever benefit we were expected to get, that didn't happen. And this, uh, and the impact of monetary policy on real variables like growth and employment, etc., is called what monetary policy transmission. So because of this problem, bank did not pass on this benefit to borrowers. So monetary policy transmission became very weak. So RBI was concerned about that. So or so you mentioned what is monetary policy? Transmission. Monetary policy transmission. To so mention that it refers to impact of. monetary policy measures impact of monetary policy measures 
on real variables. Real variables like like production, employment, like production, employment, etc., etc. In the economy, the so impact of monetary policy on real variables. So this is called monetary policy transmission. Acha, because this thing came when RBI reduced repo rate and bank did not reduce this, it means that bank did not pass on this. So it means that the monetary policy transmission became remained very weak. The so impact was not there in economy, and it was a major concern of RBI to rectify this problem. RBI said, "No, you are not now listening to our suggestion. Now we would do something. We'll give you a direction. Now we we'll, we won't give you discretion." So uh, RBI actually said, "Now benchmark will not be based rate now. Now benchmark will be." MCLR. From 2016, from 1st April 2016, the MCL MCLR will be benchmark rate of interest. What the point? Why it was changed? So earlier it was changed because bank was manipulating. Now base rate was changed to this recently uh, because of this uh, problem. Key because of monetary policy transmission remain weak. So objective is to strengthen this monetary policy transmission. Got the logic here? What was the problem? Why MCLR actually was required? Now, what is MCLR? Write down full form of MCLR. MCLR. So. Uh, marginal cost of funds, marginal cost of funds based lending rate. So marginal cost of funds based lending rate. Marginal cost of funds based lending rate. So MCLR. Acha, what is MCLR? Can we say same definition? Which we discuss here? Yes, same definition. Same, exactly. Just mention same. So MCLR means what? Can we say rate of interest at which a bank lends to its uh, most creditworthy borrowers? Yes. Is it uh, floor rate of interest? Yes. Is it benchmark rate of interest? Yes. Can bank lend to anybody below this rate? No. Everything is same. Exactly same. Just like this. Now, what is difference? Exactly same. The only difference is that K in way of fixing. So RBI issued guidelines. Actually, RBI made changes because RBI said earlier K bank would fix this on the basis of their cost of raising funds. Um, now cost of raising fund uh, actually the bank had discretion to estimate the cost of raising fund. Now RBI actually has issued now MCL is fixed by banks on the basis of the actually cost of raising fund, which is mainly based on marginal cost of raising funds. To uh, mean, uh, now uh, mention this thing, K MCLR is fixed by banks. Banks on the basis of their marginal cost, their marginal cost of raising funds. Marginal cost of raising funds. So MCLR is fixed by banks on the basis of their marginal cost of raising uh, funds. So what is marginal cost? Actually, this is uh, not solely marginal cost, rather primarily we can say primarily on the basis of marginal cost of raising funds. The only thing is that here guidelines uh, base rate is also fixed by banks on the basis of RBA guidelines for fixed cost. Here also on this, but here guidelines give more flexibility. Here flexibility is less. So RBA has well defined the method of estimating cost and actually effectively how to estimate marginal cost. And it means that the bank had more discretion in fixing base rate. Now bank will be having less discretion in this fixing MCLR. Thus obviously some uh, bank have to estimate as per RBA guideline earlier also now here. 
बट आरबीआई डिफाइंड मैथोलॉजी की यू हैव टू प्राइमरली कंसिडर मार्जिनल कॉस्ट ऑफ लिविंग फंड रादर देन एवरेज कॉस्ट तो अर्लियर बाय एंड लार्ज बैंक वॉज यूजिंग एवरेज कॉस्ट बट नाउ मार्जिनल कॉस्ट वुड बी यूज अच्छा नाउ वॉट इज डिफरेंस इन एवरेज कॉस्ट एंड मार्जिनल कॉस्ट I'll deviate from here to explain this basic concept of average cost and marginal cost. So, so I'm deviating from here just to explain. Let's suppose a firm is producing something. So, what is average cost? What what is marginal cost? Here, let's suppose number of units or quantity Q. Let's suppose let's suppose ten, eleven. 12 13 i am starting from 12 let's suppose total cost tc means total cost so tc should write down total cost ac will be what average cost what is formula of uh, average cost in you know, tc By Q, so write down this formula also. TC divided by output. Here MC means marginal cost. Marginal cost is what? Change in TC divided by change output. Change in TC upon change in Q. Okay, what is marginal utility we have discussed? Total utility, marginal utility. What is marginal utility? सेटिस्फेक्शन ड्राइव फ्रॉम कंजम्पन ऑफ एडिशनल यूनिट तो मार्जिनल कॉस्ट क्या होगा कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोड्यूसिंग एन एडिशनल यूनिट वेन वी प्रोड्यूस वन मोर यूनिट तो चेंज इन क्यू वन हो गया देन हाउ मच विल बी चेंज इन टोटल कॉस्ट तो चेंज इन क्यू इज वन तो वी कैन से ओनली चेंज इन टोटल कॉस्ट इज ऑल्सो मार्जिनल कंपनी प्रोड्यूस एडिशनल यूनिट वॉट एवर एडिशनल कॉस्ट इज इन कट दट इज मार्जिनल कॉस्ट वेरी सिंपल लेट सपोज टोटल कॉस्ट ऑफ प्रोड्यूसिंग हंड्रेड यूनिट इज हंड्रेड रुपी टेन यूनिट इज हंड्रेड रुपी वॉट विल बी एवरेज कॉस्ट कैट टेल बी दिन Then, अच्छा, what is marginal cost? Can you tell this? No. For estimating marginal cost, you should know cost of producing nine units. Let's suppose ninth unit cost ninety rupee. Just now, can you tell me this? Then ten. Okay, then nine unit ninety. So what is addition to total cost? Change total cost is ten rupee. So when we produce one more unit, we need this to change total cost is ten rupee. And changing Q is one, so this time. Okay. Now let's suppose in producing eleventh unit, the total cost is hundred and twelve. Now can you tell me marginal cost first? Hundred twelve. How much rupees? Cost of producing additional unit. Twelve rupee. Hundred se kitna bhagya? Twelve bhagya. Logic is clear. Like if next unit is produced, twelfth unit ke liye. बट इतना ही देख लेते इतने काफी ट्वेल्व इज सफिशियंट नाउ इट मे बी वन ट्वेंटी सेवन लेट सपोज कैन यू टेल मी एम सी फिफ्टीन बिकॉज हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेल्व प्लस फिफ्टीन वन ट्वेंटी सेवन तो गॉट द मीनिंग ऑफ मार्जिन कॉस्ट मतलब वेन एडिशन टू टोटल कॉस्ट वेन वी प्रोड्यूस एडिशन यूनिट मार्जिन कॉस्ट इज वेरी सिंपल नाउ एवरेज कॉस्ट कैन यू टेल मी दिस कैलकुलेट करो रादर ठीक है कैलकुलेट करके बताओ कैसे आएगी हंड्रेड ट्वेल्व डिवाइड बाय इलेवन एग्जैक्टली बताओ टेन पॉइंट वन एट तो टेन पॉइंट टू हो गया ये वन एट मतलब टू ओके अच्छा फिर और कैलकुलेट करो आगे वन ट्वेंटी सेवन डिवाइड बाय ट्वेल्व टेन पॉइंट फाइव ओके तो गॉट द मीनिंग वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ एवरेज कॉस्ट एंड वॉट इज द मीनिंग ऑफ मार्जिनल कॉस्ट नाउ वॉट वी हैव ऑब्जर्व वॉट यू हैव ऑब्जर्व हेयर मार्जिनल कॉस्ट टेन इंक्रीज टू ट्वेल्व एंड फिफ्टीन ओके एवरेज कॉस्ट टेन से कितनी हुई जब ये बारह हुई कितनी हुई टेन पॉइंट टू वेन इट इंक्रीज फ्रॉम फर्दर इंक्रीज यू कैन से इट इज इंक्रीज मार्जिनली So can we say that marginal cost will change more, always much more than average cost? Change in marginal cost will always be more or not? Yes, at the most it should be equal, but or would be more. 
तो why it is more, why it is less? Average cost gradually changes gradually. Why? When the production, when the cost increases from ten to twelve, here it increases from just point two only. Why? Any logic? Why the cost reduce less here? Why cost is reducing at slow pace? Can you tell me this? Here it increases from ten to twelve. Because this two rupee additional cost is spread over all eleven units. So per unit would actually do per unit do the additional cost would be less because the entire two rupee addition cost actually was spread on all eleven units. That is divided. And here fifteen rupee. Now fifteen actually that is divided in, in among all these actually units. So can we say always average cost will always change in lesser magnitude or not? Because whatever is the additional cost, maybe more or less will be that same for MC, but average cost will be divided into all units. So it's a basic fact. What the point or not? K average cost will always slow change at a slow pace. Logic is clear. So got the concept of average cost, marginal cost. Now here uh, RBI has uh, uh, issued guidelines that banks have to fix their MCL are primarily on the basis of marginal cost. It means that. If repo rate will increase or decrease, okay. Let's suppose RBI reduces repo rate, then which cost of borrowing fund or bank will change more? Average cost of borrowing fund or marginal cost? Marginal cost will be affected directly by that, and average cost would be divided over all actually this, all the loans. For example, bank has borrowed hundred crore already, so average cost interest bank is paying on hundred crore is ten crore. What is the average cost? Bank has borrowed hundred crore, and interest bank is paying is ten crore. So how much is the ten uh, percent? Uh, so how much percent average cost? Ten percent, clear? Bank borrow hundred and one crore. One crore or borrow kara. What the point? Hundred and one crore. Acha and the one crore additional borrowing hai. on this one crore RBI is charging now. Let's suppose. Uh, for example, like eight uh, percent interest. So marginal cost will be how much? One crore additional loan is taken by bank from RBI, and RBI earlier was charging ten, now it is charging eight percent. So marginal cost will be how much? Hmm? Marginal cost will be eight percent. Just by borrowing, we are doing marginal. Hai. Additional जो loan है that is marginal cost तो marginal cost will be eight only जो जो additional cost कितना आ रहे हैं आ रही है let's suppose twelve rupee तो that is marginal तो if bank is borrowing at one crore at eight percent additional loan is तो uh, so that marginal cost is eight percent itself अच्छा average cost will be more or less now it has paid ten crore on this one lakh and eight percent on one crore तो so average cost will be what more or less it will change more or less It will change less. It will be close to ten percent. Got the point? So if RBI will reduce repo rate, then what will happen? Marginal cost will change more, or average cost will change more? Marginal cost. So which will change more directly? MCLR or this? MCLR. This is the reason. So the only difference between this uh, here, bank was fixing actually on the basis of on an average of average cost usually. It means that RBI actually the guidelines were general, so banks had some discretion. So banks were by and large actually using primarily average cost, but here RBI has made it clear you have to calculate cost in which manner, and as such marginal cost you have to estimate, and what is the formula and method for estimating marginal cost. So it means that now under MCL banks have more discretion to fix interest this or less discretion, less discretion. It means that if uh, this repo rate will reduce, then MCLR would have be affected more or less as compared to this base rate, more. This is the reason. Now, can we say it would make the it would increase effectiveness of monetary policy transmission? Yes or no? Yes, this is the reason. So this is the reason K why RBI actually fixes this. Logic is clear. Why actually it was replaced? Base rate was replaced by MCL. Acha and RBI has issued actually guidelines in what manner cost should be estimated. So primarily it is based on actually marginal cost. Apart from that, other issues, other things could be added like tenor premium also. etc like tenor premium means like if the longer tenure loan of uh, longer tenure then interest should be high or low interest is usually high high longer the tenure of loan interest is usually somewhat high not much so that is called 
tenor theme. Let's suppose if you are borrowing um, uh, for six months and borrowing for one year. So if bank is charging, let's suppose twelve uh, percent on six month tenure. So if you borrow for one year, bank may be charging uh, maybe twelve point two. So this point two is actually premium, tenor premium for six months additional. So if the loan may be on longer maturity, some slightly more interest may be there. That is called tenor premium. So bank actually has to fix MCL on the basis of their mainly marginal cost of raising fund as per RBI guide. Okay, the only difference is that here there was more discretion to banks, and here less discretion. So more discretion, banks were using usually average cost, and banks actually now have to use marginal cost of raising fund. Okay, and actually banks have to. Uh, it is now MCL is serving as this. Although banks have to disclose base rate as well, but benchmark will be this one. And banks have to uh, fix MCLR for five maturities. Acha, what will be the difference? Like for one day, for one month, for three months, six months, like that, and for one year. So, what is the reason? What this? Acha, if um, MCLR for uh, will be uh, more for one day or one year? One year. The difference is due to error premium only. So, RBI issued this guideline. I think what the point? Why MCLR is actually replaced? Uh, why it is replaced by MCLR? Hmm. Yes, base rate is there, but for for example, old loans, uh, base rate is still serving as this. But if the customers want to migrate to this, they can migrate. And if customer want to remain under base rate, they can remain. What the point? But nobody want to remain because interest rates were high and they are reducing and further expected to reduce. So if they will remain attached with base rate, they they will lose. So everybody would like to migrate to this. So actually, if customer would be migrated to base, uh, means this will be used as benchmark. Until unless customer would like to retain this as base benchmark, so banks have to uh, disclose their base rate as well as MCL. So any doubt in this? Okay, why? The old customers, uh, they have a choice to remain with this or to shift to this. Acha, new customer would always come under MCL. No, no. This criticism was before that. Now customers have choice. So if the old customer want, they can shift over to this. उन तो दिस इज अ प्रैक्टिकल इशू लाइक अर्लियर यू नो सिंस टू थाउजेंड फाइव देर आर आर बी आई गाइडलाइन दैट इन एनी एनी बैंक यू कैन ओपन जीरो बैलेंस अकाउंट डिड यू न्यू इट और एनी बैंक टोल्ड यू इफ यू गो टू एनी बैंक जस्ट गो टू प्राइवेट बैंक इवन नाउ तो इफ यू आज फॉर अकाउंट दे विल से वी नीड एट लीस्ट फाइव और टेन और फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड रुपी मिनिमम बैलेंस बट बट सिंस टू थाउजेंड फाइव इट इज मैंडेटरी एनी बैंक बट बैंक डोंट इन्फॉर्म बट Uh, that would be a kind of that, but that will be a kind of special type account. Well, services will be limited. That will be zero balance. The services will be limited in that. So, valuated services will be limited. So, but bank don't inform actually people. Bank say no, we are charging this much. Thing. So, bank don't inform. That is a practical issue. I think got the point. But at least people have choice. At at least new loans would be automatically linked with uh, this. Advantage is that the impact of monetary policy would be directly visible. So effectiveness of monetary policy will increase. So monetary tra uh, policy transmission would become strong. Hmm? It should be rather we can say fair interest will be there. Like whatever is their cost, they, that should be reflected in that. Old uh, uh, what benefit? Old customers certainly everybody will benefit by migrating to that. The reason is that interest rates were much higher earlier in the last five years, five six years rather. India interest rates were very high, 
to those 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 people who have borrowed in the last 5 years at least they must have borrowed at higher interest in case of especially floating interest so if it would be shifted to this certainly they will benefit because now rbi reduce has already started reducing this rate uh, repo rate so and it is expected to reduce further to some extent so they will benefit but ha huh. yes it would reduce but the problem as you told ke banks are not informing because consumer has a choice to remain under this so bank uh, certainly why they would inform what the point then repo rate will decrease mcl will decrease like this would not happen when if rbi would reduce this much so it will reduce not this much but certainly much more than this this value not exactly this but the difference between this and this will not be so high now this is the thing. any doubt in this okay this is about mcl even uh, there was a question in prelims on mclr as well okay so this is now mclr is this um, benchmark is mclr no there is no specific ratio or range ha huh. not depend upon bank bank has to fix it as per rbi guideline now discretion is there but not much minor some discretion acha why banks did not reduce this during the, in the last few years like in 2015 especially why bank did not reduce this they are expected to reduce why this problem happened the reason for this problem can you tell me the reason why banks did not pass on this benefit hmm yes because reason is that ki banks were already incurring matlab profitability was very low some banks incurred loss so they wanted to maintain their profit first one thing another reason ki in the past in the last few years you know npas increase so risk increase and when risk increase bank would like to charge high or low high so banks were reluctant to reduce because of that rate also so these were the reason and general to some extent banks concern was also general to some extent was general because they wanted to maintain their profit and certainly they would be charging relatively high interest from in further lending because npa is increased because the thing is that even default will increase until less they charge high interest they cannot cannot be viable so these were the reasons because banks also were in actually a problem but the thing is that the button has to be shared now why bank should actually take advantage of that why not to pass on that advantage to economy or in, uh, through industry this was the issue you know banks rbi has allowed banks to fix whatever interest they want if a bank want more deposits like kotak mahindra is advertising yes bank is also giving 6% so bank can give more interest depending on actually uh, because people obviously are uh, will prefer other major banks public sector and like uh, other major IC, uh, banks like icic hdfc rather than yes bank so they have to offer high interest to attract more deposits to some extent yes it may increase risk if let's suppose bank may start offering much higher interest on saving account then uh, it may increase their cost then their mclr would be high and and the mclr will be high then much not much people will be willing to borrow from them this may create one problem so uh, it may affect viability but it is not happening at large scale till now if it would happen then i will take another measure <laughs> want to point and that is called in spread let's suppose mclr plus maybe bank is charging 4% from you so that is called spread interest spread the difference in that is called interest spread okay i think what the point here okay these are nursim committee recommendations and when we discuss k rb should deregulate interest rate so we have discussed separately this uh, what is this interest rate mala mclr acha then you know in 91 nursim committee was set up then again government set up this uh, committee one more committee under chairmanship of same person mr uh, m narsimha uh, and that is called narsimha committee 2 in which year narsimha committee 2 was set up in 1998 and this time name of the committee was committee on banking sector 
reforms committee on banking sector reforms but this committee is not much important the reason is that ke um, uh, most of the recommendations were not accepted like uh, some of the recommendations like it said that ke uh, a strong bank should be merged with strong banks so a strong bank should be merged with strong banks that is not with weak banks uh, or rather we can say to create international level bank to to create uh to create few international level banks to create few international level banks is the banks which should create uh, operate at international level so rather it also said ke banks should be organized in levels like some international level some national level we should operate in the entire country some regional and some rural so was it accepted no so rather weak banks were merged with strong banks for example earlier global trust bank actually failed so it was merged into oriental bank of commerce so like even uh, uh, apart from that uh, means uh, in case of private sector also some weak banks were merged so even this is these are relatively weaker banks like sbi associates are merged into sbi they are not strong bank so but can we say to some extent like uh, this merger of associate banks and bharatiya mahila bank in sbi is it a step towards to some extent towards the direction yes so actually government is planning to create this bank as an international level bank so it would operate at large scale in international uh, level so this partially we can say now there is a plan but not as such because uh, it said a strong bank should be merged with a strong bank and rather bank should be classified in various levels international level national level regional and uh, rural banks but that is not accepted actually by government so it uh, apart from that other recommendation the government should reduce its shareholding in psbs to 33 percent so because it said ki public sector banks are less efficient so this government should reduce its stake so is it desirable no So obviously not desirable. Acha, apart from that, other recommendations which were not fully implemented. Now, acha, one reason is that ki most of the recommendations were not accepted. One thing of second committee. Second thing is that ki the uh, and most of the recommendations were those which were already given in first one, which were not fully implemented. I like said that RBI should grant license to more banks, which RBI again started licensing policy. Then public sector bank should be given further more autonomy. That was also done. So these things actually general. were actually the initially the recommendation of first were repeated which were not fully implemented so those were actually uh, adopted by government so not so important actually so just you should have idea ki this another committee was set up on banking sector reforms acha to uh, these actually reforms as i told you already ki started 91 but still all these things are relevant which we have discussed 